Same with cavitation, we can listen to it, but we can digitize it and, and see what's going on. Uh, hydraulic systems, likewise, we can understand uh, hydraulic pumps, for example, that create the, uh, the fluid pressure, and we can look at the hydraulic systems themselves. You know, here I've got a, the rod is misaligned, you know, we're sort of pretending there's a great big weight on it, just pulling it misaligned. We can see some damage in here, and we can see some damage forming just here. We'll zoom in in a second, and I apologize if you had other plans for today, but um, um, but I talk too much, what can I tell you? But anyway, there are different types of faults that you can detect with ultrasound, and um, you know, it's, it's all very important. Um, as I mentioned earlier, electrical systems are a great application for ultrasound. Um, the good news is you can do a lot of testing without opening cabinet doors where there's a risk of electrocution and arc flash. You know, depending on the design of the door, we might be able to sort of listen through the gaps around the door. And, and depending on the application, we can detect corona, tracking, arcing, loose connections, partial discharge and, and power quality problems. You know, we can see it, uh, listen, see it as in, in the time waveform and uh, the spectrum. Um, we can listen to it, we can try to understand it, and there might even be visual cues as well. Um, but from a safety point of view, you know, we always have to be safe in general, but also in particular with electrical systems. There are products that you can install in the door that makes it much easier and more repeatable to take that measurement um, and potentially also do infrared. So you know, look through the door there to see what's happening from an infrared point of view, but also either with ultrasound sensors built into the door um, or listen through it as you saw just a moment ago. Rolling on the bearings, um, you know, we can detect a wide range of fault conditions and detect some of the root causes of failure like lubrication issues and um, design issues with skidding and sliding and, and these sorts of things. And we can use ultrasound to improve the reliability by getting the lubrication right. But it's just important to understand what's happening inside a bearing because we might think of them as being pretty tough and you know, made of steel and, you know, um, but if we get down to the microscopic level, there's less than a micron, a millionth of a meter. A meter is about a yard if you're that way inclined. But as those surfaces come closer together, you know, because there's uh, a lack of lubricant, um, <clears throat> we will, the, the sound will change. If there's damage in there, the sound will change, but it'll be periodic. So the more you understand about the sorts of uh, failure modes, these different types of failures and how that's going to change the ultrasound that you'll detect, what you will hear, what you will see in a time waveform and what you will see in a spectrum, the more likely you are to, to detect these types of problems. You know, we can have faults, for example, where if you took the bearing out, you wouldn't even know there was a problem because it's subsurface. And given time, it will crack through to the, to the surface, but it's generating ultrasound because of the relative movement of the metal in there. <clears throat> we can trend changes by looking at how the RMS changes, how the peak level changes, how the crest factor changes, and not that it's shown here, but even how the ketosis changes, and, and understand where the bearing is in its life and death process. Um, but again, the more you understand, uh, you'll be more likely to detect it. Ultrasound is also very good with very low speed machinery, because even though it's not generating all the vibration and whatnot that some people might think about in terms of detecting these sorts of faults with bearings, the fact is that every time uh, the rolling element rolls over the damaged area on the rolling element, on the inner race or on the outer race, there will be that same spike or shock or the ultrasound generated. And if we measure correctly, uh, then we can detect that at an early stage. Um, greasing bearings, you know, we need the right grease in the correct volume without contamination. Uh, so we need to check the bearing at the correct interval. Uh, we need to check, uh, make sure we check it 
correctly and, and make sure we know that the bearing needs to be lubricated, uh, that we don't let it get you know too long without lubricant, but we don't also check it too frequently that we're wasting our time. Um, there is a proper technique to do this so that we are sure that the right amount of grease is getting to the bearing. <clears throat> there are all sorts of potential problems. Otherwise, the grease may not even be reaching the bearing. This is a way to make sure the bearings are being greased properly. The people greasing the bearing should be uh, given more respect. Um, uh, it's a very important job and this tool helps them get it right. But here you can see you know, grease was injected. There was already you know, grease in there and that's the sound level. Uh, the sound dropped down when the grease reached, and so that looks good. Uh, but if you keep greasing, then the sound level might rise up. And now you've over-greased it. You could physically damage the bearing and the seals. The grease might go into the electrical windings. It can cause uh, the bearing to overheat and other problems. So we need the right volume of grease. And there's a visual way of looking at it and seeing what happens as the grease goes in and how the sound changes, the grease goes in, the ultrasound changes. Um, there's a lot to learn. And we've got all kinds of mechanical inspections we can perform. Knowing that we can detect friction, impacting and turbulence, there's a whole range of different fault conditions we can detect. I mean, in this case, we're looking for arcing. We've got problems with a variable frequency drive, current passing through the bearing and you can see the little um, spark there and it's causing damage for the bearing um, and you can you can see it here but you know you might see that and wonder what it is well that's the problem and ultrasound is one way to detect that problem um, you know we it's just problems that we should be on top of we can't ignore and we'll go through bearings otherwise 